Welcome to the name game. Workout number 151 is dot com. Three rounds for time. Five L pull-ups, 15 push-ups. Five L pull-ups, 15 push-ups. 750 meter row. Finally, this workout has an 18 minute time cap. The great and typical Ben fashion. Strategy is hold about 5K on the first row and see how I feel for the other parts. Other than that, just see how the, the movements hold up. I think the L pull-ups are gonna be the hard part, so hopefully they, they do okay. Three, two, one, go. And we're off. So, as the name alludes to, this is a dot-com workout. So, um, I was looking and trying to look it up again because I had been, done a bunch of Googling and trying to figure out like a, a good L pull-up workout because that's really what I wanted here. And uh, this one seemed the most accessible to the most people, whereas like a bunch of other ones were like well over 50 reps of L pull-ups in the workout. And I just thought people would just be slogging through the whole time. So this kind of felt like it fit the bill for what I wanted. So Ben, on, on the L pull-up, let's talk standards. What, what standards are you looking for in this workout? Great question. We have no idea because they've never come out in a CrossFit competition. Freaking CrossFit. The reason being probably because it's going to be tough to standardize, right? So um, let's let's go to what I think maybe they would try to look for and like what realistically we're going to be looking for in this workout. So in this workout, um, I would say like you want to keep your toes over your hip crease. That's one thing maybe they could standardize, right? Like similar to a squat almost, but keeping throughout the entire range of motion toes uh, above uh, the hip crease and then uh, besides that obviously you have to go from arms being completely extended in the bottom of the rep to chin over the bar at the top of the rep everything else is probably going to be a little bit of a gray area because like you'll see that like I almost stay back kind of away from the, the bar like my, my chin doesn't go fully forward at the bottom and it's really challenging to like get into that full overhead position at the bottom of the rep uh, so that's going to be one of those things like if they do try to standardize a movement like this, it's just going to be really hard to do. And likewise, um, it, it's just like if there's something else, like your nose has to go in front of the plane of the bar or something. Like I was talking about this with uh, one of our members here. Um, again, you could maybe do that, but it would just be kind of tough. So, but big things like chin over bar, getting to a dead hang and keeping the toes over the hip crease. Do you think they'll be, they'll go towards like a, chin up grip or pull up grip yeah great question again um with most thing like with most of the movements they don't mandate it like chest to bar you're allowed to do supinated grip just no one does because they they butterfly right whereas like stacy on occasion will do mixed grip chest to bar um and like i know th I, there's athletes out there who've done like mixed grip toes to bar and things like that and uh that's totally kosher for them it's just like a matter of like if you're if you're not kipping the movement um it makes it where you can kind of play with a little bit more so i don't think they'd standardize it and this is something that like just so people are aware of like conversations we have internally you know ben is kind of outlined um obviously some movements we commonly see in quarterfinals but there's definitely conversations of like what we think we could see at the quarterfinal level that's like maybe a new movement and so he, he wrote this workout up and did his due diligence on the fact that they programmed quite a bit of L sit or L, L pull ups over the course of what the last year, Ben? Not just like recently, but like I, so in my mind, and it, this is based on conversations that I've heard Adrian Bosman have with other people is that, uh, you know, there are certain things that they want to sort of like pull out of the archives. And he's very big on like going back to the roots of like, you know, um, you know, the good old days, things like that. He, like he's always talking with like on his podcast with Pat Sherwood about that kind of stuff. And um, this is one of those where it's certainly like been a staple in cross his programming ever since the very beginning, just like an L sit or an L pull up, both of those variations. And it's something that we haven't ever seen. And he's been talking about it quite a bit. So I think it's one of those where it's like, it's totally possible we see something like that. And that's why we did the variation that we did at quarterfinals prep camp. Um, it's also why I'm having this workout so close to quarterfinals is because a lot of people have done 
an L set in some sort of interval or an L pull up in like an unfatigued format, but we haven't really done it in a mech con. So I think it's just important to get a touch of it provided. Again, I'm not necessarily trying to predict, but it's also one of those things where there's carryover to doing other novel movements if you've done a novel movement in a workout before. So again, not an unreasonable thing for us to see. Even if we don't see it, there's going to be great carryover and benefit to other pulling gymnastics and, you know, um, just like the core compression and everything else. But um, so I'm not necessarily trying to predict, but also at the same time, uh, you know, being ready for whatever could come out. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think, for for people in our ecosystem who are pushing for a semifinals level, like an LSIT rope climb is, is something we've seen at I think semifinals and the games maybe. Yes. Um, and so that's not uncommon. I mean, I, I'm not gonna. I, I'm gonna be honest. I really hope we don't see this at the quarterfinal level. Not because it's like it's gonna Chris be a disaster. Can, like an absolute wise. disaster yeah. standard wise. Yeah, it has nothing to do with my ability or lack of ability to do it. Although, uh, you know, I prefer I would prefer maybe not. But it's like yeah. just just from an implementation standpoint, Ben owns an affiliate. You know, I I it's like the VO from last year. It's a great yeah. movement to do, but it's a terrible movement to race. Well, and I think this is even harder. Like this movement would be even harder than the VO from last year. Or I believe so. Yeah. So because of the because of the isometric nature, it's like and how infrequently people do it. It's like. Did the toe, dr you know, let's use yeah. the standard we just made up for this workout, right? Did the toe dip below the hip crease? Did it not? Who's the person's name? Do we give that, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, and How many Instagram that, followers they got? <laughs> yeah, because then all that <laughs> stuff starts to come out and people will come out of the woodwork like, ah, oh, they only gave it to her because, you know, she has all these Instagram <laughs> followers and you need this girl at the games and this guy is a no name. And it's like, yeah, it, it they don't do themselves any favors sometimes when it comes to that stuff. No, not at all. Uh, Day, obviously you haven't done this workout and other people are in the same boat. Um, is there anything just looking at it at a glance that you would, um, obviously like besides like the elf pull up or maybe how that impacts the rest of the workout, like how would you think about pacing this? This one, it's definitely going to depend on someone's like strict strength, like relative body strength. Um, I think that's going to be the limiting factor here because it's not much like, you're not really pushing heavy weight, so it's not. It's all body weight, not going super fast on it either, burning out, but it's going to be dependent on what your max push ups and pull ups are and your relative body strength. So, if someone has good pull ups, like strict pull ups in general, and they um, they could crank out quite a few, then going unbroken will be the case, just like how you did. Just going unbroken, you can see you're going at a nice steady pace. You're not, you don't look super fatigued and all that, but if there's going to be one limiting factor for most people, it's going to be like how fatigued their pulling muscles are so their back and their their biceps um and same for push-ups if someone has good relative body strength for push-ups um in that they could do those 15 unbroken really easily versus someone who doesn't have that strength may struggle a little bit more and they're going to have to break it up and that will be their limiting factor so it's all dependent on the person's the, per the person's like uh body weight strength but i think it's for most people it'll be pretty much go unbroken yeah I, I agree with all that i will also add that if you're someone who is fairly tight overhead especially like in your lats um your lats get stretched more with like that like pelvic like tucking um okay. or like uh basically when you're in like hip flexion plus a little bit of spinal flexion like that rounding of your uh, posterior chain like it really stretches out your lats as well just based on whether they insert down by your hips so um, like for me in particular you'll see that like at the bottom of each of these I'm really fighting to get to full extension like that's if you haven't done these like that's the thing that probably will surprise you the most if you're someone who's pretty good at like upper body pulling yet you struggle with like the L sit it could just be that you like lack the hip flexor strength but for I think a, a good subset of people especially the guys who do this um, if they tend to be tighter, it's like, it's not necessarily like for me, it wasn't like it was like, I couldn't do the 10 strict pull-ups each round. Right. It's like the fact that I'm just struggling to, to get to, to maintain the position at the bottom of each of those reps. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I think the going from that dead hang while holding that, um, that L sit position is going to be pretty tough. Cause if you look at it, you spend, I don't know, about 10 seconds to do the five 
outlooks or something like that. And just an also, we all know how challenging that is just to do uh, 20 seconds. So doing that repeatedly um, while having to do like a pull, a strict pull up, that's going to get challenging real quick. Yeah. I literally couldn't believe that I had to break these push ups. I don't, <laughs> I don't know why. I, I like my push ups are generally good. Like th these are some of the hardest push ups I've done. Besides like Murph, I'm like, why, why are these so challenging? It's kind of funny. I was like, I was not expecting to have to break the push-ups in this workout. <laughs> Is that, oh, sorry. Oh no, I was gonna ask like, did you feel like your upper body was just smoked from the L pull-ups and that was causing it? Or were you just genuinely like out of breath or? No, I mean, I think it's just cause like you're trying to get through them so quickly. Yeah. And like, so you do the, and you're obviously trying to like make up ground from the other parts where it's like normally if you're in like a, a push-up workout you know to break the push-ups because it's like otherwise they're just going to go to crap and but in this one it like the push-ups are just like the thing you overlook so easily because you're focused on the other stuff so it's like i think just i, I think it was a couple of things with my shoulder i haven't been doing as much like pressing volume and then uh also just like trying to you know focus on the other stuff i just probably overlooked it that you know, it, it kind of caught up with me on the very last round, which again, it's fine at that point. And I didn't really lose a lot of time, but it's just interesting. I mean, it is still 90 pull up, or, sorry, 90 push ups. Like, that's yeah, and that's what I thought about afterwards. I was like, yeah, it definitely is a decent amount of push ups. Yeah. And like, they're, they're very condensed into like these sh short segments. It's not like you're doing 90 across, like, whatever it is at the end, like 12 or 13 minutes or something. It's like, mm -hmm. you're, it's like doing three, you know, one minute AMRAPs where you're resting, like, you know, four minutes between or something, right? It's it's very it's like these short windows of like a, a high high contraction rate, and then like a not a rest in between, but you're resting that musculature in between. It's kind of interesting. Did you feel your biceps at all, like on on, the, on this row? Like were you were you just trying to relax your arms as much as humanly possible? Yeah, and, and that's something I definitely was focused on. Like I tend to have like a little bit of early elbow bend. Well, when I do a lot of movements, but including rowing. So like, <laughs> uh, like really like focusing on like almost like not using my triceps, but like really focusing on like relaxing my, my elbows and letting them be straight as I'm in my pool of the, the row stroke while still trying to keep like use as much leg and keep the, the row as, as reasonably paced as I can. Right. So I started around 5k. Uh, pace was just like a 151 or so for me and then um, that one actually slowed down a bit I think and then obviously this last one's a lot quicker but that middle one was maybe a touch slower than 5k but this last row you just get to send it it's great <laughs> everyone's favorite <laughs> yeah and again I would say last thing here is like for uh, scaling like there's no time cap, so you just might, might need to either like scale to like a tuck pull up or something similar if you're just not ready to hand, handle the volume of L pull ups just yet. That's it. You you did it. <laughs> Beautiful. You did it. You did it, guys. You did. You did great in typical Ben fashion. Thanks for watching today. Be sure to share this workout and take it on with some friends. If you want to learn more about how to optimize your performance for the sport of CrossFit or if you're interested in hiring one of our coaches, head over to ZorFitness.com. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe. Best of luck on the workout, and as always, stay the course.